I'm Dylan Radigan. I've interviewed nearly every CEO and most world leaders during the past 25 years. And now I'm bootstrapping, I'm turning my attention to the new CEOs and the irrepressible entrepreneurs leading the next generation of innovation in the world. Welcome back to Tasty Live. I am Dylan Radigan. Time for some more bootstrapping. My guest today, Talia Mashia, the company Evid. She was a guest on bootstrapping some six years ago. And so while I was not the host at that time, I still, on behalf of the Tasty organization, uh, welcome you back. Um, and it sounds like things have been very good the last uh, six years for you, at least regarding this this uh, business. Um, what is Evid? Well, Dylan, thank you so much for having me. And it is nice to be back. And I also haven't done um, any a lot of these uh, appearances in a while. I've been kind of uh, focused on the company for the last couple of years. So it's good to to be out there again. Um, so Evid is a global pay AP and payments company. And we focus in uh, live events, uh, media and entertainment, uh, specifically around uh, film and TV production. And we support the business to be able to make payments on a global scale. So give me an example of, of a use case or, or, or a scenario where this sure. becomes uh, valuable. So let's take the fun part of making a movie. So when a movie needs to be made, they have to go to a, a particular state and sometimes even a small city. You have all different types of small suppliers that need to get paid, whether it's the lighting company, the rental company. Sometimes you need to rent somebody's driveway. You've got hair and makeup people that you need to pay it could be sometimes thousands of little suppliers that need to be paid for a movie and these big companies to use one of their big SAP systems to try and onboard all these suppliers issue them purchase orders go through weeks of process doesn't work for them and so they need a payment system that's a lot faster uh, to be able to get the suppliers paid and so Eved goes in we onboard all of those suppliers they only need to be in our system once like kind of like a LinkedIn or Facebook once they have an account like, and they can do any movie out there that uses Avid just by being invited. And then they can easily be able to pay uh, those suppliers and easily with all the compliance and security that their uh, companies need them to have. So we allow so, these so, uh, so let's say I'm Disney, for instance, and I'm doing a move, whatever, standing up a production. And, and the total cost of the production is a dollar, let's say. So I give Avid the dollar. And then that dollar is going to be 100 different people are going to get a penny. Correct. Just for Matt. And now Evan basically figures out who are those people, what is their tax ID, what is their, you know, LLC or whatever their whatever their entities are. You deal with the, all of the app, the bureaucratic apparatus between the budget for the film and the vendors and the studio pays you once and then you do all of the distribution. Is that correct? That is correct. And so um, if even prior to like, this has been a big change in the movie production space where even before COVID there was, you know, people would come in, they'd get like a paper invoice from someone, put it on someone's desk. And then they, they cut checks and they'd mail those checks to someone to sign. And then they'd go take that stack of checks and mail them to someone else to sign. And then they'd go send those out to everyone. And, uh, and that obviously is a real opportunity to be able to go digital. And so we've really been able to come in and eliminate that need to cut all of those checks. And also, you know, there are certain, when it comes to a business, there are compliance requirements and you need to make sure that you've got the proper tax ID and you have bank accounts that are, you know, you don't want someone emailing you their bank account to load that into an ACH. You, so having a secure portal that those suppliers could go in. And the other piece too, is the suppliers that are there maybe working on, you know, 200 movies a year, they have to onboard 200 times into each one of those production systems. And with Evid, they onboard once into Evid, get all that information in, they manage it themselves. And then they, that can work for all 200 of those movies if they're using Evid. Yeah, the film industry is a big customer. Um, big media companies are a big customer. And we also, we, we started this company doing live, you know, live meetings and events. And so we still have a lot of our customers that do a lot of live meetings and events. So, but they all are large, larger corporations. Um, and then on the movie side, there could be large corporations that are doing movies, but um, also could be, you know, smaller independents that need to do movies as well, or, or TV shows, any type of film production. Mm -hmm. What about the music industry? Yeah, we actually do work in the music industry as well. Um, we have a few clients. They they use our system. They typically you'll uh, 
if you sign an artist, you'll have a budget that you can spend on promoting them. And so a lot of the music companies will use our system to um, manage that budget and um, pay all the suppliers to promote that artist within our system as well. So we've got a lot of really cool names mm -hmm. um, in our uh, platform. And when there's ever there's music awards or there are like uh, film awards, we have lots of payments flowing through and uh, it's really fun. We have to keep that all confidential, but you know, you get, you get to see a lot what's going on. You get a look at what you get a pile. You get a look at the future of entertainment. Yeah, it's it's uh, fun for those who are like you know love the celebrities. They they have a lot of fun working in our in our company. In, in your, and so, what's the future of the business? Because it sounds like you've been doing this for a while, and it sounds like you've established yourself pretty well at this point. What are you imagining the future to look like? Uh, so we added and we started in, in um, live events and meetings, and we did that for a very long time. Um, we did definitely struggle through through COVID, and I'm happy to share that story because I think that it's always awesome to talk about all the highs that you have as an entrepreneur, but there's also a lot of challenges. So we definitely were challenged significantly when COVID hit, when it was in meetings and live meetings and events for large corporations. And that really forced us to, we had started dabbling in the film and TV space and entertainment space, but that really pushed us over those two years to have to really move in that direction. And so it's really recent for us that we're, and we're really just getting started in the film and TV space. And I, we still feel like the meeting and event space is not still back to where it was pre-COVID um, in terms of these large corporations. And so we really took a huge step backwards um, during from the COVID hit and, and feel like in many ways we're rebuilding, rebuilding better. Um, but we're early in the film and TV space. And so for us, we're definitely very focused there. It's a ripe for a huge opportunity. Uh, the large banks would love to play in it, but you really need to know the space really well. You need to understand the workflow. Um, these the producers, the accountants, they need to move fast. They need things to be easy. And so we spent now this la just really the last couple of years understanding and learning that space. And we're definitely very, very focused on a huge amount of opportunity to grow within, within the film and production space and the entertainment space in general. I, was, I would think that a business like yours is an interesting target for a larger bank as a, as a service vertical for them. Uh, yeah, I, so there is definitely opportunity. I think that at, at some point when we sell, it'll be a big bank that winds up wanting to acquire us uh, because it's difficult mm -hmm. for them to go into these particular um, sort of uh, industries or categories where there is a, a unique uh, workflow that's required. Um, we have definitely have some partnerships. We have a, a great partnership with American Express that we signed. We have a great partnership with SAP. Um, and we're working on um, a few other really great partnerships so they can leverage our platform and offer those opportunities to their clients and still um, be able to uh, provide the for us to be able to provide that white glove service levels that I think are often difficult when it gets to these big organizations. And then are, do you, was there a, I, I would think there's also potential for this business outside of the United States. I mean, certainly there's a very robust film industry in France. There's a huge film industry in India. Granted, that's a, probably a bit too far afield. But there, there are other places, obviously, where there's a lot of entertainment production outside of, of the United States. And I'm imagining they have the same demands. Yes. Yeah, so we actually have had to be a global company uh, since our inception because we've targeted the Fortune 500 companies and they work on a global scale. They're not interested in working with one provider, software payment provider, one place and another. And so we're actually um, even our we have an office in Europe. We have an office in China that actually has a team there to support. And we uh, we are pay out in 140 different currencies. And we are what we call funded in over 38 different countries. And so we definitely play on a global scale. Uh, there's very few countries that we don't operate in. So that's actually one of the big advantages that we have coming into this space where there are existing players. They are not global. And so we can provide that global scale. And why would a producer or a large studio use your service versus any of the sort of wide variety of sort of digital payment systems that now exist, ranging from PayPal to Venmo to, to down that down all sort of all the things that we know. What's the key differentiator? So I, I think the key differentiator first starts with a B2B payment platform versus a 
a consumer platform. And, and I think there's a lot of different things, especially a large company needs from a compliance and control perspective that the um, consumer facing platforms don't have. So then when you take it to the B2B platform, you've got the, the banks are really offering a traditional ACH platform, which again, somebody is collecting from those suppliers that information It's typically over email. Um, it's a lot of work. They have to, they have to each supplier, every time they work with a, a production has to redo the same information every single time. Um, and they just, there's not a necessarily a workflow that meets the needs of a particular industry to make it easier for them. So it's a little bit more difficult to do that with the large banks. Um, there are other um, competitors in our space that are targeting uh, the film and TV production space. Um, and I think they're, they've, their they're software, they're, I would say their service company that happens to provide software. And EVED is really about a transformational software company that provides an incredible service. And I think when you lead with innovation and you lead with software, you're cons con like consistently improving the experience of the client. I also, um, one of the biggest differences about EVED is that we've built out our platform end to end, own our own rails, um, it's all our own software. And I think a lot of the other providers, they're payment service providers that use third-party software. So they can't necessarily control end-to-end -end the experience or the costs. So um, while they've definitely got more market share than us, I think we are an incredible uh, opportunity to come in and, and provide something different. One of the sort of common components, especially of smaller providers in foreign lands, you talked about all these different currencies and countries, is they would like to get paid in cash. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Yeah. So the customers that we have, if they want to pay in cash, then they can do that in cash. Then they would just kind of log that they made a cash payment within our system. So we don't pay in cash. And for most, that's not compliant with a lot of the types of customers that we have. However, um, we no, do I'm thinking about the small vendors who want to receive yeah. cash. Yeah, if that if they need to do that, then they're not doing. Then you know they have the ability to kind of make payments outside our platform and log them. So they've got that. Got so it. they would do that. But I'll tell you what's interesting. Even in the entertainment space, in the film and TV space, it used to be everything was petty cash. They had they called it an envelope, and they they'd sign out that envelope, and they'd give out the cash, and then they had to record what they did. And that has really shifted from a compliance perspective of not being able to do much of that anymore. And what they're using, what we've created and what's out there is what we call our Abed pay card, which I actually have one right here. And it's a okay. balance card and you can put through an app on the platform, you can load up a certain amount of money for um, it be your runners or whoever else is on the team and they can go and when they spend it and it's Apple Pay or uh, or, um, or Google Pay and it automatically the transaction comes into the app and you could just take a picture of what you of what you spent and the accountants okay. can manage and see all all the visibility of where all that money's going and they actually we even call it an envelope you send your envelope up for approval so we still even use the language that they used when they manually did the petty cash to mimic that process. Tilia, thank you so much. Uh, right, I am thank Dylan. You. I am Dylan Radigan. You've been watching uh, Bootstrapping. More tasty live right after this.